Guys, do you know what it's like to try and film when you've got the worst stutter ever? Like, if I showed you my outtakes, it would be three hours long every single video. Anyways, good morning beautiful people, welcome back to another full day of eating and I've got a lot to talk about in this video, a lot of important stuff actually and also to top that I have got the most, ex well the most exciting for me anyway, the most exciting and highly requested nut butter review, okay that's a lie, it wasn't highly requested but the nut butters that I've got to review today are just going to blow your mind. So yeah, upon reflection of the way that I eat I'm making a few changes for the better and it's nothing to do with health it's all to do with ethical things but I'll talk more about that in a bit when I say in a bit I mean in like two minutes because first I need to make a smoothie and the smoothie I'm gonna make today I did show you guys a while back I think it's one of my all-time favorites it's a blueberry muffin smoothie high protein blueberry muffin smoothie and you're gonna love it so Let's make a smoothie. Ooh. All right, first thing we need for this bloob muffin smoothie, and I know I've said it already, but trust me, it tastes exactly like a blueberry muffin. Uh, we need one ripe banana, banana, banana. Lots of frozen bloobs. One scoop of Madagascan vanilla protein powder from Vivo Life. I think the last time I showed you guys this, I used the blueberry one. But it's even better with the vanilla. Much better, actually. Usually when I make this, I use whole oats, but I don't have any. So I'm using some oat bran, which hopefully will give the exact same flavor. We need a generous spoon of cashew butter. I've tried this with almond butter and peanut butter, but it just... It's just not the same without cashew butter, so make sure you've got some. The one I'm using today is the one from Meridian. Is it the best cashew nut butter? No, it's very over-roasted. Um, but at least it's in a glass jar, which I'm all about. And some plant milk. I always use cashew milk for this. I don't know, to kind of go with the cashew nut butter. And last but not least, a little dash of cinnamon. There we go. Um, yeah, also I got changed because I just sprayed bloob smoothie all down my green hoodie. Every time I film, I realize that I make like a smoothie in this and then I pour it into a glass jar and I, just to make it look more presentable. When in reality, you guys don't care and then I have to wash up two things. It's the whole thing. I'll leave the ingredients and the measurements I use to make this the exact flavor that it is in the description box down below. Um, it is super tasty. It's honestly one of my top three, yeah, probably my top three smoothies. It's very thick, but I love it. All right, so let's have a little chat. Yeah, these small little changes that I'm making to my diet are nothing to do with health. I feel satisfied all the time, the way that I eat. You know, my health is thriving, both, I was gonna say both mentally and physically. We all know I'm not thriving mentally. Basically, I feel satisfied the way that I eat. I really enjoy the way that I eat. And also, I'm not someone at all that tracks like calories or macros or even micronutrients or whatever. Like maybe I've done it once a year or twice a year just to see like where I'm at. And especially if I make some changes, etc. But like the way that I eat, like I think even if I tried, I couldn't be deficient in any kind of nutrient, any kind of amino acid, especially because I eat higher protein now. And of course you guys know I eat a wide variety of fresh fruits and vegetables, but that's where the problem is. I've realized, and I'll talk more about this in another video, um, and this actually might be an unpopular vegan opinion, but you don't need to be fully vegan, like 100% vegan to be healthy. Am I 100% vegan? Yes, that will never change. You have my word. If 90% of your diet is made up of whole plant foods, lots of fruits, vegetables, legumes, whole grains, nuts, seeds, you know, just whole foods, then yeah, any diet that is based on whole foods, you can be very healthy, you can thrive. That is a fact. I don't think anyone would argue that. But, but yeah, the reason I stay 100% vegan 100% of the time, well, as far as I know, unless someone's like slipped something in my food, is for ethical reasons. And that brings me back to the point that the way that I eat and the way that you've seen me eat like over the last year, over the last two years, whatever, it's a very nourishing diet, but it's not ethically sustainable because of the amount, the ton of raw vegetables that I eat. And I've spoken about this in other videos as well. My stomach is a big black hole. It, it was much worse before I was vegan. Now that I eat like a very high fiber and high protein vegan diet, I'm a lot more satiated. As in, I don't need to eat huge amounts to feel full all the time. So like definitely eating higher protein and higher fat helps a lot with that. I say I'm an ethical vegan, but I can't be a hypocrite. The way that if I'm really fully vegan for environmental reasons, then within the way that I'm eating, even though it's not harming any animals, you can still do damage to the planet with your choices. Which brings me to... 
This is the problem right here. Romaine motherfucking lettuce. I mean, it's not the only problem, but it's the main culprit. Let's be real, probably the most ethical and sustainable way of eating on a vegan or plant-based diet is one that is revolved around dried staples. Things like um, rice, you know, whole grains. Don't get me started on the rice. That's not gonna happen. I mean, yeah, things like rice, beans, whole grains, legumes, nuts, seeds, etc., whatever. Okay, maybe not almonds. I know they're not that sustainable, but you know what I mean. Dried staples. The amount of plastic that I buy to maintain the way that I eat because I eat such large green salads every day, sometimes twice a day. And of course, all of the greens that I'm buying, for example, romaine is the main culprit. I will literally eat four heads of romaine every single day. Do the math, or maths, as we say in the UK. In America, I know you say math, like singular, here we say maths, I don't know why. And you know this is true, you've seen the way that I eat. Every single meal I add greens to, I usually add greens to my smoothies. Like whatever I'm eating, and it's better, oh, the sun is fucking pissing me off. Like you guys know, and you've seen from my videos, whatever I'm eating, I always eat a large salad with that. And that's because number one, I enjoy eating that way. Like if I could just eat the way that I wanted all the time, I would just eat huge green colorful salads with avocados and roasted chickpeas, throw some sweet potato in there and like a nice creamy nut based dressing. That's the way I love to eat. You all know this by now. Um, and don't get me wrong, like I love my fruit as well. You know I can go to town on fruit, especially in the summer. But again, the thing is I'm sitting here well, I'm leaning over here, telling you that I'm an ethical vegan, and yet I go through two bags of this every single day. So, I mean, roughly 30 days in every month, that's 60, just for Romaine alone, 60 packets of plastic I'm consuming a month. I mean, times that by 12, that's math that I can't do. And of course, this is just for Romaine. I also buy spinach in plastic, because where I live, you cannot get it in not plastic. I buy kale in plastic, celery in plastic, organic carrots in plastic. You know that I always buy organic carrots just because they taste better, nothing to do with the health reasons, I, I don't care about that. And then even things like bell peppers, cucumber, even avocado a lot of the time in this country comes in plastic. Also, even the locally grown fruit, like this time of year we have locally grown apples and pears, it all comes in plastic too. You've got to weigh up the pros and cons of like nourishing your body but also being aware of how much plastic you're consuming. Well, I do anyway, especially considering I claim to be an ethical vegan. And the thing is as well, I need a sip, hold on. The only thing that I can do is look within my diet and look at what is unnecessary. So for me, am I gonna cut, say, fruit out of my diet because most of it comes in plastic? No, I'm not. But what I can do as a responsible vegan is cut down on the things that are unnecessary. And again, like, no one needs to eat four heads of romaine every single day. Considering the fact that I eat a lot of other greens in my diet, like broccoli and kale and spinach, spinach, 60 packets a month of this, just to fuel my romaine addiction. And like I said, whilst I enjoy eating that way, whilst I enjoy eating that amount of greens, it is not necessary to maintain good health. Um, so yeah, you'll probably notice my meals will be a little bit different. Obviously still whole foods, plant-based and lots of color, lots of nutrition, just. I, it probably sounds stupid, like most people, I guess, and I know a lot of vegans too, they have to like encourage themselves and try their best to eat more greens in their diet. I guess I'm the total opposite, so I need to decrease the greens in my diet to be better ethically, which sounds mad, but that's what it is. Just remember that you are an individual health-wise, your health needs, but also where you're living. If you're living in a cold climate and you're trying to replicate someone's diet that's like a very high fruit, raw vegan diet and all of the food that you're buying like the fruit that you're buying is coming imported and in plastic i think you really need to check yourself i was gonna say check yourself before you wreck yourself but before you wreck the planet Ooh. all right guys i've just washed up these fresh vegetables which i'm gonna roast for part of my lunch yeah i was able to buy all of these the sweet potatoes these very oh these sweet red bell peppers which i'm addicted to and the brussels sprouts came not in plastic which is pretty amazing they did however come with a whole fucking field of mud. I washed these for like 10 minutes, but they've still got mud on them and I, I give up. Anyway, see, I'm gonna roast up some of this. We're gonna have some tofu action, some peas, some hummus, some avocados, the whole shebang. It's gonna be fun. I am always amazed by the insides of vegetables. This one kind of looks like a mini, mini cabbage, mini cabbage, and also a white tree. Um, I personally think, don't know what you guys think. I personally think that people that peel their sweet potatoes before they roast them, they should be shot. 
There is a place in hell for you guys. The skin is always the best part by far. A little bit of salt and pepper. A little bit of olive oil. Yeah, whenever I roast veggies, I just always roast extra because why not? Then you've got them in the fridge for snacking, for dunking in hummus. Just wait until you see how these Brussels sprouts transform into a completely different vegetable when they're caramelized. Anyways, into a hot oven for 20 minutes and I'll get on with the rest. This is the tofu I'm using. Um, it's already kind of pre-cooked, I think. It is basil tofu and it is so delicious. Just chopped on salads, thrown in pasta, even on top of whole grain toast, it's the bomb. Now that is what I'm talking about, my friends. I know they look a little bit burnt, these Brussels sprouts, but trust me, if you've only ever had them steamed before, they actually become sweet when you roast them. All right, so here's the final result. In this bowl, by the way, for once, I'm actually eating a normal size bowl. Obviously, if I'm hungry, I'll just eat more. I've got so much extra of these veggies that I roasted up. And yeah, so underneath I have got one head of romaine, not four. I've got some pickled red cabbage, got some of that basil tofu for protein that I showed you earlier. Speaking of protein, and actually one of the most underrated sources, cheapest sources of plant-based protein in the world, got a big bed of steamed peas. There's a lot more underneath these succulent caramelized vegetables. And of course, a big dollop of creamy, creamy hummus. I know a lot of you guys don't like sabra, I just cannot get enough of it. I thought I had some avocado, but it turns out that I don't, which is pretty tragic. What I do have is a beautiful lake of liquid gold. Just going for the aesthetic now, you know like when the camera goes off, like half the jar goes on. And actually speaking of plastic, I do have a new tahini that I'm using, which is glass, which I shall reveal in an upcoming video. Look at that, proper runny stuff. Mm. and happily apply to face. Cheers. Oh yeah, also I forgot to say, regarding my breakfast this morning, um, I always usually put a couple tablespoons of either flax or hemp in it. And um, this morning I didn't need to burp. Just for extra omega-3s and health insurance, so I'll include that in the recipe down below. Uh, this morning I just ran out. I constantly run out of hemp seeds because I eat them by the bucket load. But I mean, in regards to omega-3, like I do take an omega-3 vegan supplement now, which I talked about in previous videos. Anyways, I'm gonna go apply to face and I'm so excited. Ooh. Guys, I have never been more excited. We are in for a special treat today. We are back with two more flavors from the brand Naughty. I love this brand. First of all, not sponsored or anything, but they did send me a box of these and I've got some incredible, like just wacky flavors. I think the wackiest one of them all is this one, which is indeed smoky maple bacon. I mean, what the actual f I... I mean, before we get into the test, as you can see, these pots are absolutely tiny, and I did communicate this with Naughty, um, and they took it on board, that's why I love them. So now they are gonna produce bigger pots of all of these flavors. This one is choc chip, no it's not. This one is chocolate hazelnut nut butter. I'm assuming it's kind of like Nutella-ish, you know, chocolate hazelnut, that kind of thing. I'm gonna start with, do you know what, I feel like this one's gonna be savory, because it's bacon flavor. So I'll have that first and then the chalk hazelnut nut butter can be the dessert. Now, I have been given strict instructions by Naughty that when I taste this, you need to put it on sweet potato, which is exactly why I roasted up extra sweet potato earlier. Okay, you're probably thinking, what in God's name are the ingredients? Well, let me tell you. Peanuts, smoked paprika, garlic powder, tamari, oak smoked water, what the fuck is that? Coconut sugar, maple syrup, sea salt, all organic ingredients. The one thing I will criticize is that their nut butters are very thick, but the thing is these jars are so small that you can't even really churn unless you like make a tidal wave. All right, you know what, I'm done. I'm gonna dunk this little bit of roasted sweet potato in there and we go, cheers. Guys, all right, let me tell you. Do you know what? Do you know what, yeah, if I'm being honest, there are so many layers of flavor. Like at first you get a big hit of paprika, then it kind of flows into the bacony smoked flavor. And then at the end you get like intense sweetness from the coconut sugar and the maple syrup. Basically, if you are someone that misses the flavor of bacon and you love like smoked intense things, then guys, this would be your jam. All right, onto the chalk hazelnut, which I'm very excited about. Hazelnuts, raw cacao powder, coconut sugar, sea salt. Sounds bomb. Just when you thought 
you couldn't get it even thicker than that. See, this is my prob. This is my prob, guys. You might need to take an interval break, guys. Go to the bathroom, get some more popcorn, get a refill on your soda. Look, now that I've churned it, that is nice, quite nice and runny. I mean, there's still some lumps in there, but anyways, cheers. Mm. Mm. Oh, yes, baby. Naughty, you have just redeemed yourself this. I will say this is very sweet, like very, very, very sweet for a nut. I think this might be like the sweetest nut butter I've ever tasted, but I reckon it would be amazing on porridge, oatmeal. All right, final verdict on these two. This one, if I'm being honest, like I said, it's not for me. I'm just not into that bacony type of flavor. But if you are, this could be your crack. And this one, all I can say is I can't wait for the big pots to come out because I'm gonna be all over that like a rash, so. Anyways, yeah, I love Naughty because they are a bomb vegan company and they make some wacky flavors and some of them come through. So, I know I've been eating out a lot in my videos in the evenings recently, but if I'm being honest, I kind of plan it in the winter as nothing pisses me off more than trying to film when it's dark with artificial lighting. It's a whole thing. Realistically, I eat out like once a week, so just deal with it. Anyways, on this evening, I went to meet a very special friend at one of my favorite places, which is Wagamama's, and they've actually just released a brand new vegan menu, and I wanted to try all of it. Wagamama's is Asian-inspired food. They do curry, stir fry, salads, tempura, the whole shebang. We got some of the edamame, <laughs> very over-salted edamame, even for me, and also some of the vegetable tempura, which came with the most delicious dip. There's nothing better than a piece of deep-fried broccoli, if you ask me. You just can't beat it. For mains, I got this fragrant coconut curry, which was infused with lemongrass, turmeric, citrus. The flavors were on point, as they always are at Wagamama's, and it came with fried tofu, butternut squash, and vermicelli noodles, which I have just decided are my new favorite noodles. I literally ate every last drop and even licked the bowl clean. Anyways, guys, as always, I'm sending you all so much love, and I'll see you on the next video. Laters.